Cinderella's Story Once upon a time, in a land far, far away, lived a beautiful girl named Cinderella. After Cinderella's kind mother died, her father married Lady Puffy. Lady Puffy had two arrogant, jealous, and quarrelsome daughters, just like herself. They would fight for hours, even over something as simple as a hairbrush. Ah! Stop it! I said stop it! Give it back! It's mine! Ah, no! No! One day, Cinderella's father had to take a long journey. Lady Puffy took this chance to give all the hard work in the house to poor Cinderella. Cleaning the whole house, carrying wood to the fireplace, and preparing meals took up all of Cinderella's time. Despite her hard work, Lady Puffy and her daughters were cruel and proud. Mother, Cinderella is filthy. Don't let her eat in the same room with us. Don't let her sleep in our room. We're having nightmares. You heard what my beautiful daughters have said? Go and find a place to sleep in the attic. <laughs> Poor Cinderella settled in a dusty old room in the attic. Out of her small window, she looked down to the garden. And from time to time, she would talk to a snow-white pigeon. Why, hello, sweet pigeon. As the days went on by, while cleaning up her room in the attic, Cinderella met two little mice. Who are you, little guys? Hi, I'm Cheddar. I am Mozzarella. And I am Cinderella. You little guys love to eat cheese, don't you? I will prepare a delicious meal for you. Yes, 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 yes! We are starving! We haven't been able to go to the kitchen for hours. There is a mean, hairy, sharp monster down there. That nasty cat, Papu. First thing tomorrow morning, I'm going to prepare a delicious breakfast for you two. The next morning, Cinderella went to the kitchen without making any noise. The mean cat, Papu, waited in front of the tiny mouse hole in the kitchen to hunt Cheddar and Mozzarella. Cinderella silently took some pieces of cheese and headed to the attic. But then, Lady Puffy's daughters caught her. What are you holding in your hand? And where are you going with it? Um... It's just some cheese for breakfast. Mom! Cinderella is stealing our food. I'm stealing? I would never steal anything. A thief and a liar. What an evil girl you are. The little mice went downstairs and started to run around the kitchen to scare the evil sisters. Ah! Oh no! A mouse! There's a mouse in the house! Mom, I'm scared! Not one mouse, it's two! Ah! Lady Puffy was just about to catch the mice when there was a knock at the door. The royal ambassador arrived! <clears throat> His Majesty the Royal Prince has prepared a grand ball at the castle tomorrow night. All the young ladies around the country are invited to this ball. As soon as they heard about the grand ball, Jezebel and Cassandra ran with huge excitement to their rooms and started to pick dresses for this important evening. Also, Lady Puffy wanted her daughters to look beautiful. So, the evil stepsisters forced Cinderella to prepare beautiful ball dresses for them. The next day arrived. Cinderella was very tired. Her little friends tried to wake her up. Cinderella, wake up! Wake up! You have to go to the ball! But I don't 
don't even have a dress. The only dress I have is dirty. Close your eyes, Cinderella. We have a surprise for you. Her little friends took Cinderella to the middle of the room. The white pigeon lifted the cover of the wall with its beak. Ta-da! Ta-da! I can't believe it. It looks amazing. Cinderella put on her new dress and did her hair and finally went downstairs. But her evil stepsisters saw Cinderella and went crazy with jealousy. Lady Puffy didn't want Cinderella to go to the ball when she saw that she was prettier than her own daughters. So she threw a bowl of beans into the fireplace in the living room for Cinderella to pick up. If you can pick up the beans out of the ashes and put them back into the bowl within five minutes, you can come to the bowl with us. <laughs> Cinderella wanted to go to the ball so much that she began to pick up the beans. Her little friends saw her situation and came to help. Within five minutes, they picked up all the beans and put them back into the bowl. Cinderella ran after Lady Puffy, who was already leaving, and showed the full bowl to her. Lady Puffy still did not want Cinderella to go to the ball, so this time she used Cinderella's dirty dress as an excuse. And they left Cinderella in the house and went on to the prince's castle. Poor Cinderella was very sad. She sat down in the garden and wept and cried right under a hazelnut tree that her mother had planted long ago. And just then, the hazelnut tree began to shake and to shine. And a beautiful fairy appeared in front of Cinderella. My name is Leabelle, and I am here to help you. Don't be sad. You will go to that ball as well. But how am I supposed to go to the ball like this? Leave that to me. Hmm, I just need a pumpkin. The other things I need are already here. Cinderella came back, holding a pumpkin in her hands. Fairy Leabelle began to wave her magic wand around and turned the pumpkin into a beautiful coach. The mice into very nice horses and the pigeon into a well-dressed coach driver. Cinderella couldn't believe what she saw. But how did you do this, Leabelle? The fairy waved her magic wand again and put Cinderella in a beautiful blue dress. On her feet appeared sparkling glass slippers. I look like a princess now. Thank you, Leabelle. Now it's time for you to go to the ball. Hurry up. The fairy warned Cinderella before she headed to the ball. But don't forget, you need to be back at midnight or else the magic will be gone and everything will be as it was before. Cinderella listened to the fairy carefully and finally headed to the castle. The pumpkin coach stopped in front of the big castle. Cinderella, with her overwhelming beauty, entered the castle. The guests of the ball saw Cinderella and wondered who this beautiful young lady was. Neither Lady Puffy nor her daughters realized that this beautiful girl was Cinderella. Prince Leo moved towards Cinderella and fell in love at first sight. Beautiful young lady, may I have this dance, please? Cinderella was mesmerized by the magical dance with Prince Leo so that she forgot about the time. 
When the clock was just about to strike twelve, she remembered the fairy's warning. You need to be back at midnight or else! Cinderella left the prince back and ran out of the castle quickly. Where are you going? I don't even know your name. Cinderella ran down the castle's stairs and all of a sudden lost one of her glass slippers. Unfortunately, she did not have time to go back and take it. So she ran to the coach as fast as she could and left the castle. Find the beautiful owner of this lost slipper. If necessary, every girl in the country shall try on this shoe. As soon as the clock stroke twelve, everything turned back to what it was before. Cinderella went back to her room in the attic. She thought about the magical night she had had with Prince Leo and realized that she fell in love. But it seemed to be impossible that the prince would recognize her with her old dirty clothes. Time passed, and the prince had a huge mansion built next to the castle for the precious glass slipper. All the young girls living in the next country visited this place to try the slipper on. Even Lady Puffy and her daughters visited the famous mansion, but did not take Cinderella with them. You stay at home. It is impossible that the shoe belongs to you. Right, the shoe is going to fit Cassandra or to me. But I also am a young girl living in this country. I have the right to try on the shoe as well. Lady Puffy did not even listen to Cinderella. She locked her up in the house and left with her daughters. Of course, the glass slippers did neither fit to Cassandra's feet nor to Jezebel's. Ah, if I try only a little bit more, I think it will fit. At nighttime, when the mansion's lights were sparkling, Cinderella made it out of the house, thanks to mozzarella and cheddar. She arrived at the majestic mansion and walked towards the sparkling glass slipper. As she was just about to try on the shoe, Prince Leo stepped into the room. Stop. Don't move. You're going to damage the shoe. No, no, no. It's my shoe. It fits me perfectly. She is telling the truth. She is Cinderella. Cinderella courageously put on the shoe in front of Prince Leo, and he realized that the shoe you fits perfectly that night. To Cinderella. You, you are the beautiful girl I danced with on that night. May I know your name? My name is Cinderella, Your Highness. Will you marry me, Cinderella? Cinderella happily said yes to the prince, whom she fell in love with. They got married in the big castle and lived happily ever after. Snow White and the Seven Dwarves Once upon a time, there was a kind-hearted queen who lived in a snow-white castle surrounded by an enchanted forest. While watching the flaky snowfall on a cold winter day, the queen was daydreaming. She could hear children playing in the snow outside. <laughs> she opened the window to see them, and the wind whisked away the queen's favorite red handkerchief, and the handkerchief fell right on top of the snowman the children were building. They waved and thanked the kind-hearted queen. I wish I had a daughter with skin as white as snow, cherry red lips, and a kind heart. The months passed, and the dream of the kind-hearted queen came true when nine months later, 
her long-awaited wish came true, and the king and queen had a baby girl, the most beautiful in the world, and they named her Snow White. But their happiness did not last long. While Snow White was still a little girl, the queen passed away and became a star in the sky. A few years later, Snow White's father married a woman named Hela. The king was amazed by the beauty of the new queen. So he never realized that she was arrogant and proud. Mira, Mira on the wall, who is the fairest of them all? You, my queen, are indeed the fairest in the land. <laughs> no one can be more beautiful than me. Snow White grew into a beautiful young lady. Her father, the king, went on a long journey with his soldiers and gave his daughter a big hug before he left. Don't be sad, Snow White. I'll be back. One day, the vain, evil-hearted Queen Hela called her chamberlain, Dunkov. Unveil my magic mirror, Dunkov. Chamberlain Dunkov was clumsy and pulled the cover down onto himself. You fool! Get out right now! The queen admired herself in the mirror and then said, Mirror, mirror on the wall, who is the fairest of them all? The magic mirror answered her, In this land, my queen, you are no longer fairest in the land. Snow White is the most beautiful. Hela became very angry. It can't be. No one can be more beautiful than me. The whole castle seemed to shake with her anger, and her evil heart wanted to destroy the beauty of Snow White. She made a plan and ordered the royal huntsman to take Snow White into the enchanted woods and kill her. And bring me back her heart. Snow White trusted the royal huntsman and went with him into the woods. Along the way, she saw a wounded bird on the ground. And Snow White picked up the bird to help heal its wing. Behind her, the royal huntsman sneaked up on her and took out his bow to shoot Snow White. He drew back the bow and took aim, but he could see that the girl had a kind heart as she held the wounded bird, and he decided it was wrong to kill Snow White. Snow White, she ordered me to take your life. I can't kill a person as good and kind as you. Who wants to take my life? It's Queen Hela. You must run away and hide. The huntsman chose to trick the queen and killed a wild boar instead so he could take the boar's heart to the queen and make Hela think that the princess was dead. The princess was terrified and ran through the dark woods. She struggled through sharp branches and bats in the night until she could run no further. She collapsed against a tree and fell asleep in the cold, dark, enchanted forest. When the huntsman reached the castle, he marched directly to the queen. I have fulfilled your command. Queen Hela took the box and examined the heart. She believed that Snow White was dead, and her evil laughter echoed through the castle. <laughs> When the sun finally rose, Snow White woke up in the heart of the forest, and there before her was the cutest little house with a small garden gate and picket fence, tiny windows with a doorbell, and a round green door. She rang the bell, but no one answered, and when she reached for the door to knock, 
It opened. Inside, everything was so small that it felt like she was in a toy house. Tiny pots, tiny spoons, glasses. When she found a tiny bowl of soup, she was so hungry that she ate it. And then fell asleep on a tiny bed. Not far away, the owners of the house finished their work in the mines and went home. As soon as they entered, they knew something was wrong. So they walked quietly and whispered. Shh! Uh, someone has eaten my bread! Mm. Someone has used my plate! Someone is sleeping in my bed right now! Mm. Such a beautiful girl! Catch! Oh! Hey. Wow! Uh, oh, Get the lamp! Whoa! Catch! Yikes! Phew! Oh! Oh! What? Shh! She's awakened. She's hiding under the blanket. Hmm. Don't be afraid of us, little girl. We are the seven dwarves. I am Ace, and these are jolly, angry, curious, silly. Shy and lazy. Well, I... I am Snow White. I'm sorry I wandered into your house. Snow White told them everything that had happened to her. And the dwarves were very sad to hear her tale. So they said she could stay with them in their little house. But only on one condition. We really love to sing. Is your voice beautiful, my princess? Snow White is my name. I'm far away from the castle today. I stare at the sky and speak to my mother. She is now a Far away, in another land, there was a young, handsome prince. His name was Antoine. He loved sitting outside at night and looking at the stars, which reminded him of the people he loved. One night, he saw the face of Snow White in the starry sky and felt he should seek her out. A fairy told him she was in danger and gave him a magical heart necklace. So Prince Antoine got his trusty horse and rode away to find the beautiful face in the sky. Back in the castle, the evil-hearted Hela was again in front of her magic mirror. Dunkov, uncover the magic mirror. Let me see my beauty. Dunkov entered, but the cover got caught on the mirror, and he almost knocked it over. Dunkov is such a clumsy assistant. Always at the most critical times, he becomes awkward and clumsy. The queen was continually annoyed with him. When Dunkov had left, Queen Hela again asked the mirror to tell her how beautiful she was. 
Nearer, nearer on the wall, who is the fairest of them all? Sorry, my queen, but Snow White, who lives with the seven dwarves, is the fairest in the land. Ah, uh, no, no! I thought Snow White was dead! The queen stayed up all night, making evil plans to kill Snow White once and for all. She decided the best way to disguise herself, so she changed into a cute little bunny. In the morning, the dwarves went off to work. One by one, they kissed Snow White on the cheek and walked to the mine. And they warned her to be careful while in the house alone. Now, princess, don't open the door to strangers. It isn't safe. The forest seemed peaceful, and Snow White began to water the flowers in the garden. The princess noticed a little bunny sitting in the garden, who seemed hurt. She went over and picked it up and brought it inside the house. She bandaged the rabbit's hurt leg and let it rest in the sun on the dwarf's bed. The bunny seemed like it was sleeping, but as soon as the princess left the room, the rabbit opened its eyes and looked around. Then it jumped, 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 and turned back into the evil Queen Hella. This was exactly what she had planned. She poured purple poison into the pillow, thinking that the princess would sleep there and die from the poison. Snow White was so tired from working in the garden that she went inside to rest. She was just about to put her head down on the poisoned pillow. Snow White! <laughs> Snow White! When she heard the dwarves come home. The princess met them at the door, and after a delicious dinner, they danced all night long. Snow White fell asleep in front of the fireplace, and it's a good thing that she did, because then she wouldn't be sleeping on the poisonous pillow. When the queen returned to her castle, Dunkov was still asleep, guarding her door. Thinking her plan had succeeded, she went to the magic mirror. Mirror, mirror on the wall, who is the fairest of them all? My queen, Snow White, who lives with the seven dwarves, is more beautiful than you. Gah! No! No! No, no, no! I should be the most beautiful in all the land! Me! I will make a plan that will kill Snow White! A few days later, while the dwarves worked in the mine, Snow White was sewing some of the dwarves' worn clothing. And then, she heard a knock on the door. The door was knocked three times. Snow White looked through the door to see who it was. And it was an old, ugly woman with a basket of apples. Who are you? I'm a saleswoman. I have very delicious apples. Would you like to try one? Snow White was afraid to open the door at first, but she loved red apples. Here you go. Enjoy it, my beautiful child. A free sample. Snow White took the apple given by the old woman and took a bite. The apple had been poisoned. She fell to the ground before she could even cry out for help. Just down the road, Prince Antoine rested his horse in the shade of a tree. He had traveled far to find the beautiful face he had seen in the sky. Just off the road, he saw an old woman walking along. He was about to go speak with her, when suddenly she transformed into the evil Queen Hella. The prince and his horse were stunned and he decided to not go ask her for directions. Later that night, when the dwarves came home, they saw Snow White, still and lifeless, 
on the floor. They were so sad, and their hearts were broken into a thousand pieces. They crafted a beautiful glass coffin and carried her to the country's longest river so that all the people of the kingdom would know of her beauty. Just downstream, the prince was traveling on his horse on the riverbank, and he noticed the glass coffin in the boat. He recognized the face of the girl immediately. The prince was very sad. But he opened the cover of the coffin. He took the stardust necklace from his pocket and put it on the princess. Goodbye, my princess. Shine like a star wherever you are. But just then, the prince saw Snow White moo. The stardust necklace was magical and rewarded him for his diligent search of the face he saw in the sky. Snow White revived. When she awoke, she was amazed to have such a handsome prince standing beside her, rescuing her. When they eventually got to shore and returned to Snow White's castle, she and Prince Antoine told the king everything. When the king learned what Queen Hela did to Snow White, he banished her from the kingdom. The king locked the magic mirror and all of the queen's possessions into the dungeon of the castle. Many months later, Snow White and the prince fell in love because this was not an arranged marriage and had a beautiful wedding in the castle. They invited the dwarves and celebrated and lived happily ever after. <laughs> the story of Little Mermaid Aria Once upon a time, in the very deep ocean, there was a world that no one knew about. Dolphins would sing, jellyfish would dance, little colorful fish would swim. And in the deep waters was a glorious underwater kingdom. The sea people in this kingdom lived in peace with all the underwater creatures. It was ruled by King Poseidon, who loved his daughters so very much and always kept them in the kingdom. Arya was the youngest and did not understand why he never let her go anywhere. He told her there were dangers outside the kingdom's gates. She thought he must mean the men and creatures living on the land. Arya, someday you will be old enough to wear your own crown. But until then, you must stay here in the kingdom where it is safe. I forbid you to leave. But, but, I, I'm so curious about the people and animals on the land. The people on the land have no respect for the life in the sea. They throw trash in our ocean and we can't trust them. So you need to trust your father, Arya. Little Mermaid Arya did listen, but the more she thought about what her grandmother said, the more curious she became. I just cannot wait for my grown-up crown. The people living on the land might be just as kind as we are. And little Arya thought up a plan in order to sneak out of the underwater kingdom. She thought about her friends Big Whale Willie and Little Dolphin Dolphy, because they could go in and out of the Water Kingdom whenever they wanted. At the gate to the Underwater Kingdom, the Swordfish Guards moved aside to let Dolphin Dolphy and Whale Willie out into the ocean. They were free to come and go as they wanted. But once they were out of sight, Whale Willie opened his mouth wide and out came his stowaway, the Little Mermaid, Arya. And just like that, Arya was out on her own and swam right up to the surface of the water. 
For the first time of her life, she felt the wind, saw the sunset, and heard the seagulls. This is an amazing feeling. Here's my home, deep blue sea. Everything is fun, friends with me. The king called me the little mermaid, the very best daughter of the king of the sea. Just look around, you will see the joy, a beautiful life, and the ocean roar. Just then, Arya heard music coming from across the water. She dove into the water and swam towards the sound. Then she saw a huge boat and fireworks over it. A boat! Come, Dolphy, let's get a closer look. Arya, stop! It might be dangerous. Her friend Dolphy had warned her. But Arya didn't listen. Arya, stop! She swam up next to the boat, where she could see the king of the land and his son, Prince Edward. They were celebrating the prince's birthday. A prince, Arya! He shouldn't be here. Those soldiers could be dangerous. We should go back home now. They might see us. The prince. Started playing his flute on the bow of the ship. He doesn't sound like a bad person. Arya sang along with the tune of the flute with her beautiful voice. La 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 la. The prince heard her voice. And looked around, surprised. Whose beautiful voice is this? Be careful, Arya! They're going to see you. Far, far away, King Poseidon's evil sister, the sea witch Vega, used to live in the palace of King Poseidon, but had done bad things and was banished from the beautiful underwater kingdom. The day has come. The daughter of King Poseidon and a human. I sent thunder and storm and lightning, waves to overturn the boat and sink the prince. <laughs> Because of the sea witch's spell, the waves began to break apart the prince's boat. We need to help them. Arya dove into the waves, swimming through the debris of the sinking ship all the way to the bottom of the ocean. She saw the flute of the prince and grabbed it. Then she saw the prince sinking to the sandy ocean floor. She took his hand and swam as fast as she could towards the land. Wake up! Please wake up! The prince slowly awakened, and was shocked to be alive. You're alive, and to see a beautiful red-headed mermaid next to him. Arya heard a dog barking, and realized she was on the land, and quickly dove back into the sea. The king and his soldiers and a young lady were searching for the prince, hoping to find him on shore. A girl saved me, father. I couldn't see her face, but I feel like I've heard that voice before. Meanwhile, back in the ocean, Arya returned to the underwater kingdom. She still had the prince's flute, and couldn't stop thinking about how handsome he was. Her father had been looking for her, and when he saw the flute, he knew that she had gone up to the surface of the ocean. I warned you, Arya, and you didn't listen to me and ran away from the safety of the kingdom. You should have waited. 
But the prince would have drowned. What? A prince? You left the protection of the kingdom, Arya. You must trust me so that I can protect you from danger. I forbid you to leave the underwater kingdom. King Poseidon left. He was upset and deeply worried about his daughter's heart. But Arya was still determined to return to see the prince again. And so she made a terrible mistake and left her father's kingdom again to seek out the evil witch Vega in the dark part of the ocean. Vega's two-headed guard snake was watchful around the witch's sea palace and saw the little mermaid coming. Vega, the king's daughter approaches. It's time to take revenge on the king. I knew this would happen. She has a wild, rebellious heart. Let her in, Snake. Arya was a little frightened, but wanted to see the prince, so she went in to ask the witch for help. Vega agreed to help, but demanded something valuable from the Little Mermaid. I will prepare a magical potion to turn you into a human. You will walk on the land and dance with your precious prince. But in return, I will take your beautiful voice. <laughs> my voice? I mean, but without my voice... Mermaid shrugged and accepted the evil potion because she was foolish and her heart wanted to fall in love with the prince. But remember, the magic potion will wear off in three days. Unless you get the prince to fall in love with you. Otherwise, you will change back into a mermaid and never remember your prince or your father ever again. <laughs> Arya was so foolish and drank the magic potion. Then she started swimming up to the surface of the sea. And as she got closer to land, her tail started to disappear. And instead, she had human legs. Her friend Dolphy saw her and quickly came to help her. Arya, you've never had legs. You need to be careful. Little Mermaid managed to get to the shore with the help of Dolphy. Prince Edward was already there, looking for the girl who had saved him. You seem familiar. Have we met each other before? Arya did not have a voice, so she just nodded and gave the flute back to the prince. Yes. We have met. You must be the girl who saved me from drowning. And that voice I heard while I was playing the flute on the deck. What is your name? Arya tried to explain what happened to her. Oh, you cannot talk? But she could not speak. So the prince decided that she must be a different girl. Since the girl he remembered had a beautiful voice. Still, he wanted to help this desperate girl and took her to his palace. At the Land Kingdom's castle, the prince's father was preparing for his son's wedding to another young lady. Arya watched from far away and was sad that she could not marry the prince. The days passed and she could not talk to the prince. Arya knew the potion would wear off soon, and she would lose all her memories. Arya thought it was impossible for her to make Prince fall in love with her without her voice. Then the third day arrived. Arya was so sad. But just then, something unexpected happened. Her mermaid sisters came out of the sea and then her grandmother. My dear grandchild, we have come to rescue you and break the witch's evil spell. Then the waves rose up in a giant splash 
and Arya's father, King Poseidon, came out of the water. Arya, my beautiful daughter, you went to the very danger I was trying to protect you from, but I have rescued your voice in this seashell. I have broken the witch's spell, so you will have your voice, and you will always remember us. The king of the sea pointed his trident to the seashell in the hands of the grandmother, and the spell was broken. Her voice returned back to Arya. My voice? Thank you, my dear family. I love you so much. Ah, no! Whale Willie rushed the Little Mermaid to the prince's boat. The prince and a princess from another kingdom were about to be married. But suddenly, the prince heard something and stopped. It was Arya's beautiful voice again. After seeing Arya on the whale, Prince Edward jumped into the water to go speak with her. It was you. I knew it. You are the girl who saved me. My name is Arya. And so it was that Prince Edward called off the wedding and made peace with King Poseidon's ocean kingdom. Arya was the first mermaid who ever learned to live on land as a human and as a mermaid in the sea. And eventually, she and Prince Edward became friends and married and lived happily ever after. Once upon a time, there was a rich man. This man had three young daughters. Two of his daughters were very arrogant and sassy, and the other one was very kind and hardworking. This kind girl's name was Beauty. One day, the rich man got the news that his ships were lost in the storm. He told his daughters that because of this, they could no longer be rich. Beauty was very sad about her father's situation and consoled him. The other two sisters complained about the situation all day. One morning, their father received the news that one of their missing ships had arrived in port. My daughters, if my ship is still intact, I will bring you presents on the way home. Tell me, what do you want me to bring? A diamond ring, a ruby stone, a gold bracelet. And what about you, Beauty? Just bring me a rose, Daddy. When the father arrived at the port after a long journey, he saw the wrecked state of his ship and was very sad. On his way home, he passed through a dark and cold forest. Lightning flashed in the sky. The trees almost fell from the speed of the wind. The man was so cold and frightened that he wanted some rest. But just then, he noticed a magnificent castle. The man entered the castle. Hey! Is there anyone here? There was nobody around. Despite this, it was quite bright and warm inside. Moreover, the top of the dining table was filled with delicious food. When the poor man saw the food, he could not resist it and ate them all. While walking around the castle, he saw an empty bedroom and went inside and had a comfortable sleep. When he woke up the next morning, he found new clothes next to him. This castle must belong to a kind fairy. I wish I could thank him. When the man was about to leave the castle, he noticed roses in the garden. I couldn't buy expensive gifts for my daughter, but at least I could take this rose for beauty. The man plucked one of the roses. <laughs> 
that moment, a very strong roar was heard. A terrible monster appeared from behind the trees. The man was so scared. I fed you. I made you sleep comfortably. And you are plucking my roses. Is this how you think? Forgive me, sir. I just wanted to take a rose for my daughter. There is a punishment for what you did. You have to bring me the first person you meet on your way home, or I'll catch you and imprison you for a lifetime. The man left sadly. Father, who couldn't see anyone along the way, saw that only Beauty was waiting for him when he got home, and their eyes met. So he regretfully told her what happened to him and the beast's will. Hearing this, the other sisters got very angry with Beauty. If you hadn't asked our father for roses, this never would have happened to us. What if my eyes would meet my father's? What would happen then? I was going to surrender to a beast? Oh no! I'm so sorry, Daddy. I will do whatever it takes to keep you away from being imprisoned. The man took Beauty with him and went to the beast's castle as he promised. They enter the dining room. Just then, a roar was heard again and the beast came into the hall. Beauty was scared. But the ugly beast spoke very kindly to her. Your father will be leaving my castle in a little while. And you, will you continue to stay here voluntarily? Yes, I will stay here voluntarily. Beauty hugged her father and sent him home. Then she started walking inside the castle and saw a door decorated with roses. Curiously, she entered. A piano on one side, a swing on the other, a huge bookshelf and thousands of books. The room was just like in her dreams. She saw a small note on the table. My dear queen, I want to see you happy always. Your wishes are commands for me. Beauty thought she wanted to see her father one more time. Then she went down to the hall for dinner. After a while, the ugly beast came into the hall. My queen, may I accompany you to dinner? You are the owner of this castle. Why are you asking me? No, no. You are the owner of this place, Beauty. If you want, I'll go right away. I'm sure you find me very ugly anyway, don't you? Beauty was very surprised at the Beast's reply and did not know what to say. I wish we got married and lived a happy life together. No, I don't want to marry you. The Beast then left the hall. However, at every dinner, he prepared wonderful meals for Beauty and was very kind to her. As the days passed, Beauty realized that she was getting used to the ugly beast and was having a good time with him. Moreover, she was no longer afraid of the beast. One day, Beauty told the beast that she wanted to go to her father because she missed him so much. Of course you can go, but promise me you'll be back. I promise I will be back in three days. Then put this ring on your finger. As soon as you take off the ring, you will find yourself in this castle again. Beauty put on the ring and went to visit her father. Her father was very happy to see Beauty, but her sisters were very jealous of her. Your ring is so ugly, and it doesn't look good on you at all. 
Three days passed quickly. Beauty stayed there for the fourth day as she had so much fun with her father. However, she had a terrible nightmare in her sleep that night. In her nightmare, the beast was standing in the garden, sad and weary. As soon as she woke up, realizing that she missed him, Beauty immediately took the ring off her finger. Thus, she suddenly found herself in her room in the castle. She rushed down to the garden. The beast was indeed lying in the garden, exhausted with sadness, as she had seen in her nightmare. She came close to him and hugged him. Wake up, beast, wake up! If something happens to you, I will never forgive myself. The beast opened his eyes for a moment. Beauty, I thought you wouldn't be back anymore. I became sick with sadness and became weak. I... I realized I missed you while I was away, and I came to you voluntarily because I... I love you. I want to live a happy life in this castle with you. At that moment, everywhere was covered with shimmering lights. She was looking around and was astonished at what was happening. When she turned her face to the beast again, she saw that there was a handsome prince in his place. Huh? Oh, who are you? Where is the beast? The beast is me, beauty. I was under the influence of an evil spell. If you hadn't told me you loved me, I would have remained an ugly beast for the rest of my life. Beauty has added happiness to her happiness, thanks to her good heart and true love. After that day, the handsome prince and Beauty lived happily ever after in the bright castle. Once upon a time, in a faraway land, there lived a lovely couple. One day, the woman gave her husband the good news that she was pregnant. Her husband was so glad about the news that he said he would do anything for her. And one day, she told him that she was longing for some crunchy lettuce. If I can't eat some of that delicious lettuce from our neighbor's garden, I won't get any rest. So her husband went into the neighbor's garden to fulfill his wife's wish. But the poor man did not know that his neighbor was a very dangerous witch named Camilla. No one knew, but the witch was 150 years old. To look young, Camilla could only touch golden things, so she covered everything in her house with gold. She covered the plates, spoons, and forks, bottles, lamps, even the chairs on which she sat. Everything was covered with gold. And that evening, there was a knock at the door. It was the neighbor who had come to ask for some lettuce for his pregnant wife. Camilla said that he could take as much as he wanted from the garden. But under one condition. If your child has golden blonde hair, I'll take it. <laughs> the man didn't know what to do, but he foolishly agreed and prayed that his child would not have blonde hair. But a few days later, his wife gave birth to a beautiful baby girl with golden blonde hair. They called her Rapunzel. Camilla somehow knew the baby would be born with blonde hair. So she took the baby from her parents and brought her home. The witch 
bitch took very good care of Rapunzel. She combed her blonde hair, which grew a little longer every day. Camilla never wanted her hair to be cut, because she would take long strands of hair and cook it in a magical cauldron and turn it into gold. My magic turns her long golden hairs into gold. I'm set for life. <laughs> Yippee skippy. Deep in the forest, Camilla used her magic to build a huge, tall tower where Rapunzel would be trapped and her hair would be safe. The tower didn't even have stairs inside. It was just one small room with one small window. Rapunzel grew up in this room alone for 18 years, except for Camilla's visits. When Camilla came to visit her from time to time, she called on her from below. Rapunzel! 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 Let down your golden hair! Rapunzel would let down her long braided hair down the window, and Camilla would hold on to it and climb up into the tower. Mother, why doesn't this tower have stairs? Why can't I step on the ground and play with flowers and animals? My beautiful golden-haired girl, this is the only way I can protect you from the evils of the world. There are many dangerous animals out there and all kinds of mean creatures. If something were to happen to you, I wouldn't survive. One day, Rob, the handsome prince of the country, who was born on the same day as Rapunzel, took his horse for a ride in the forest. The prince heard the singing in the forest and listened carefully. This voice is such a beautiful voice. And followed the sound of the mysterious voice until he finally arrived at the bottom of the tower where Rapunzel lived. When she sang at the window of the tower, he immediately fell in love with her. He glanced around for a door to the tower, but could not find one. And just then, Camilla also arrived at the tower. So the prince hid behind the bushes because he knew of her reputation as a wicked, mean witch. Oh no. That's Camilla, the evil witch. What is she doing here? Rapunzel! 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 Let down your golden hair! Rapunzel let her long hair down for Camilla to climb up. The next day, the prince returned to the tower, but when he arrived, he tried to imitate the witch's voice and called up to the tower. Um, <clears throat> Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your golden hair. Rapunzel thought the voice sounded odd, but let her hair down anyway. Prince Rob quickly climbed up the hair curious to find the voice that had sung so beautifully. Mm. Oh, what a hairy climb. Rapunzel was frightened when she saw him. Uh, um, who... <laughs> who are you? How did you get here? I'm Prince Rob. I thought you might be in trouble because of the witch and all and no stairs. Um, oh no. I, I, I'm Rapunzel. I don't know you. My mother says strangers are dangerous creatures. Oh no, get out of here! Don't worry, I'm not a dangerous person or, or creature. I simply heard your beautiful voice and wanted to see what the witch was up to. 
So I guess I'm here to rescue you. The prince's words softened Rapunzel's heart, and she began not to be afraid of him anymore. Miss Rapunzel, would you like to go down off the tower with me to smell the flowers, take a walk in the forest, and meet beautiful animals? Rapunzel wanted to discover the life outside for years. So she accepted the prince's offer straight away. got an idea that can help both of us go down the tower. When the next day arrived, the evil witch Camilla arrived at the tower and was about to call for Rapunzel when she saw her long blonde hair hanging down from the top of the tower. Hmm, I guess she saw me coming and let her hair down already. Camilla started to climb up to the top of the tower. And then she heard sounds of a horse. She thought someone might be nearby, but she didn't bother any further and climbed on because she wanted to reach Rapunzel as soon as possible. When she arrived in Rapunzel's room, she was shocked. Rapunzel wasn't there anymore. She had cut her hair off and run away from the tower. My gold! My gold is gone! No! <laughs> Rapunzel! Rapunzel had cut her hair and tied it to an iron on the wall of the tower so she and the prince could climb down together. Camilla, alone in the tower, desperately touched Rapunzel's cut hair. No. No, 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 no! It doesn't work anymore because the hair is cut off. The hair must have roots to turn into gold. In the meantime, Prince Rob and Rapunzel arrived at the prince's castle. And the prince told everything to his father and mother, the king and queen. The king said that he had heard the name Rapunzel from an old farmer and his wife. So the prince immediately took Rapunzel to the old house of the couple who had said they had lost a baby named Rapunzel. As soon as her poor mother and father opened the door and saw Rapunzel, they recognized her. My daughter, my dear daughter, you found us. The evil witch took you away from us. It has been so many years, but you're finally home. We are your real family. Rapunzel was very happy to meet her real family. And what do you suppose happened to Camilla, who was left in the tower with no gold? I'll find you, Rapunzel. I will hunt you for the hair that turns into gold.